results that came in better than expected. Joining us now to break down the numbers, Bernie McTurnan of Rosenblatt Securities and Tuna Amobi of CFRA. Good afternoon to you both. Bernie, I'll start with you. What do you think of the results? Yeah, um, really good results. And really the, the highlight for us was on the park side. And the parks beat um, on segment alive. It was actually revenue driven. Expenses actually came in slightly higher than expected. So good that they're getting uh, greater capacity utilization. The other piece on Disney Plus subscribers, great numbers. The only thing is that the Disney Plus ARPU was actually down substantially, um, probably driven by increased uh, take or, or a higher percentage of subs coming from Disney Plus Hotstar. So um, it was about a quarter of subscribers last quarter. So looking for um, what the company has to say in terms of how much the Disney Plus Hotstar drove the subscriber result. But Hulu had a really strong ARPU driven by uh, advertising. So, um, you know, strong, strong sub, sub numbers on Disney Plus and then great parks profitability. Tuna, I want to come to you next in terms of this uh, subscriber number um, and, and the fact that we're, we're getting quoted 146 million uh, in terms of DTC subs in total. Are all 146 million of those uh, as profitable uh, as each other or are we really should be focusing purely on the Disney Plus part of it? You know, I think uh, within that number, uh, Disney Hotstar um, makes up a, quite a significant amount, a, a decent amount, I'd say about 30 percent of that number um, in India. Uh, but that being said, I think the way to think about this uh, direct to consumer is kind of holistically, right? They've said that uh, in the next, uh, by fiscal tw uh, 2024, uh, they're going to be uh, turning profitable. Uh, we think based on what we're seeing now, actually, um, it seems to us that they're going to get there much faster. Uh, than, uh, than expected, where that business as a whole is going to be uh, self-sustaining. And what, what's really uh, remarkable now, we got a much cleaner picture of that direct-to-consumer business based on the new segment reporting. Uh, you can see that breakout now, the linear networks and the direct-to-consumer. So it's much more streamlined, uh, much better handle for analysts such as us to uh, kind of figure out uh, the trajectory of that business going forward. And we think that based on these subscriber numbers and also the guidance that they've provided, um, you know, we wouldn't be surprised if uh, uh, they would revisit that um, those targets as early as uh, next year. Yeah, I mean, Tuna, I, I think about Netflix, right, and how much attention investors have have spent over the last couple of years looking at their content spend. I mean, I think it's kind of Disney's turn now. What are you expecting, and what does that mean in terms of that equation over the next couple of years for that specific business to become profitable? So, Morgan, they've uh, telegraphed that they're going to be uh, effectively quadrupling the content spend um, within that streaming business, uh, hitting almost $8 billion uh, by fiscal uh, 2024. Now, Netflix is already uh, north of $17, 18000000000 billion as we speak. Uh, and given the, uh, the pipeline that Disney has really prepared, uh, Marvel, you know, Pixar, Star Wars, et cetera, we would not be surprised, uh, Morgan, if that number actually hits uh, $10 billion, uh, sooner than later. So uh, it, it's really a rat race out there for content spend. And, and the way that you think about it uh, is that you got to stand out from, you know, from the clutter. And the way that Disney has kind of lined up, uh, you know, these shows and the pipeline, I think uh, content spending has nowhere to go but up. But the good news is that as long as they can maintain these subscriber numbers, um, there is really a, a tremendous runway. And remember, uh, Disney Plus, as we speak, is right now in only less than a uh, uh, little over two dozen countries, Netflix over in uh, 190 countries. Uh, so you kind of get a sense that uh, even at 300 to 350 million target subscribers um, by fiscal 2024, that number uh, is going to start looking pretty conservative uh, pretty soon. Bernie, where are Disney in, in the debate about how and when movies should be released whilst uh, we're still in lockdown? And what will you be listening out for on the call? Yeah, well, so the next movie that's coming out in the PVOD window is Raya and the Last Dragon. That's going to be hitting the service, I believe, March, uh, the first weekend in March. Um, so, you know, we'll see. And, and the company has said that they want to maintain flexibility, but they really did roll out a pretty robust slate of movies like Cruella that's going to be hitting Disney Plus and not in the PVOD window, but actually that comes with your subscription. So, um, you know, Netflix has a really robust slate of movies this year as well. HBO Max uh, putting putting all their movies on the service as well with the day and date release schedule. So um, this is a really interesting year for all these different streaming companies to test to see that if um, movies can really drive subscribers to the platform, um, you know, the way that hit series can as well. All right. <clears throat> well, we'll be listening out for the call. Thank you both for breaking it down for us right now. Bernie and Tuna.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.